This video is on solving proportions. A proportion is a mathematical sentence consisting of a fraction equal to a fraction, one fraction equal one fraction, such as one half equals five tenths, right here, one half, one half equals five tenths, x over four equals one over eight, x plus 7 all over 3 equal x minus 2 all over 6. These are all examples of proportions. Now whenever you're solving equations, there's if you watch my videos, I sum it all up with one rule, which is do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Your goal, as always, is to isolate the variable so that you know what it's equal to. Usually a number, but in the case of a multivariable problem, it could be uh, just a variable expression. All right, our first example is x, uh oh, that's the highlighter, x minus 1 all over 3 equals x plus 1 all over 5. Now, this is a proportion because you have a single fraction on the left and a single fraction on the right. Now, to figure out what we need to do to both sides that's going to be helpful, what we want to do is look at the denominators and find the least common multiple of those two denominators. The least common multiple of 3 and 5 is the smallest number that both 3 and 5 go into and that number is 3 times 5, or 15. So watch what happens when I multiply both sides of the equation by 15. Now remember, if I do the same thing to both sides, then I'm fine. Now I'm going to put those 15s over 1s to emphasize the fact that the 15 is in the numerator of a fraction. Now when you have a common factor in the numerator and in a denominator, you can cross reduce. 3 goes into 15 five times. So we're canceling a factor of 3 from numerator and denominator, leaving 5. On the right, 5 goes into 15 three times because 5 is a common factor of 5 and 15. That's the very nature of a least common multiple. Now what I have left is I have a 5, and then I have an expression, x minus 1. Notice how I have to put it in parentheses now. On the right, I have a 3. See this green 3 over here? I have this 3, and then I have an expression, x plus 1. Now this particular version of the equation is considered simpler because it doesn't have denominators. There are no fractions. I also want you to notice while we're on it that the 5 on the right was in the denominator and now it's on the left and it's in the numerator. The 3 on the left was in the denominator and it's now on the right in the numerator. More about that later. So parentheses, as written here, indicate the need for distribution. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. The equals is still here. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 1 is positive 3. This is an even simpler version of the equation because the parentheses are gone. Now what I'm going to do is gather my x's. I'm going to do that by subtracting 3x from the right. Why? Because 3x minus 3x makes 0. Now if I subtract 3x from the right, I also have to subtract 3x from the left. 5x minus 3x is 2x. Bring down the minus 5, the equals, and the 3 on the right. The next thing I'm going to do is add 5 to make a 0 where the negative 5 happens to be. So those are going to cancel, which means it's the right thing to do. So I'm going to also add 5 to 3. Now 2x is by itself, 
the equals is still in the middle. 3 plus 5, of course, is 8. And now I need a 1 in front of x instead of a 2. So I divide 2 by 2 because 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now, if I divide the left by 2, I have to divide the right by 2. And what I'm left with is 1x equals 4. And that's the solution of the original proportion. All right, next example. n plus 3 all over 5 equals n minus 1 all over what? 2. Okay. Now, again, to figure out the magic thing that helps us, we need to find the least common multiple of the denominators 5 and 2. The first number that both 5 and 2 go into is 10. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 10. I'm going to put the 10s over 1s again to emphasize uh, their fraction nature. Now, just like before, 5 goes into 10 two times, and 2 goes into 10 five times. So I'm reducing, I'm cross-reducing my fractions. I'm left with a 2 and an n plus 3 on the left. I'm left with a 5 and an n minus 1 on the right. Notice the denominators are gone, so this is a simpler version of the same equation. Now the parentheses on both sides of this equation indicate distribution. 2 times n is 2n. 2 times 3 is positive 6. 5 times n is 5n. And 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Now, now that I have both sides as simple as possible, and typically in a linear equation, simple means no more than two terms per side. Now I'm going to draw a line at my equals, and I'm going to start gathering my n terms together. Now I'm going to subtract 5n from the right because it makes a 0. If I do it to the right, I do it to the left. Now I have 2n minus 5n, which is negative 3n. Bring down the plus 6, bring down the equals, bring down the negative 5. Now I'm going to subtract 6 from the left because 6 minus 6 makes a 0. If I subtract 6 on the left, I do the same thing to the right, and I have negative 3 on the left, equals in the middle, and negative 11 on the right. Now I need to make a 1 in front of the n, so I divide both sides by negative 3, and I get n equals positive 11 thirds. And that's the solution of the original proportion, which you can see up here written in the blue. Next, oh, I want you to notice something. Notice again that the 5 right here on the left in the denominator is now in the numerator on the right, and the 2 in the denominator on the right is now in the numerator on the left. We're going to use that fact to make a shortcut rule called cross multiplying. We're going to bring the denominators across the equals and instead of dividing by those numbers, we're going to multiply by them. So it's called cross multiplying or cross multiplication. And we're going to apply that to this next example. So we're going to take the shortcut. 2x minus 1 all over 3 equals x over 7. 
Notice I have a single fraction equal to a single fraction. And we're going to we're going to take the shortcut. We're going to cross multiply. So the 7 is now being multiplied by the 2x minus 1. And the 3 is now being multiplied by the x. The parentheses indicate distribution. 7 times 2x is 14x. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. 3x can't be simplified, so just leave it 3x. Now we're ready to actually do the solving. So this time I'm going to subtract the 14x to make a 0 over here on the left. I'm going to subtract 14x from 3x. And now I have negative 7 equals negative 11x. Now remember, your goal is the variable by itself. So we're solving for x. So we need to move the negative 11. So we're going to divide by negative 11 to make a 1 in front of x. And if I divide on the right, I have to divide on the left. I have positive 7 elevenths on the left equals, that's 1. So I have 1x or just x on the right. And this is the solution. You can see that cross multiplication helped us shorten that process. We didn't have to find the least common multiple. We didn't have to cross reduce our fractions. We just up, up and over. We just switched them across them. All right, next example. 1 over x minus 3 equals 3 over x minus 5. Now, don't panic because you have expressions in your denominators because the cross multiplication tells you to take the denominators, cross over the equals, and change the problem to multiplication. So this is going to go up there, and the x minus 5 is going to go up here. So on the left side, you're going to have the 1 in the numerator. See this one right here, right, carried down right here. Then you have this expression, x minus 5, joining the 1. On the right, you have this 3 in the numerator, and coming up to join the 3 is the x minus 3. So no more fractions. They're gone. I'm going to distribute 1 times x is of course 1x, 1 times negative 5 is negative 5, 3 times x is 3x, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. That's as simple as I can make this problem. So now it's time to gather the variables and gather the numbers. I'm going to subtract 3x to make a 0 right here, so I also have to subtract 3x over here. I get negative 2x minus 5 equals negative 9. Now I'm going to add 5 to make a 0. And if I add 5 on the left, I have to add 5 on the right. Now I have negative 2x, there's my 0, equals negative 4. And now I want 1x. So I divide out the negative 2, both sides, and I get 1x equals negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. And that's the solution of the blue problem that you see up here at the beginning. x equals 2. All right, I think I have one more example let's see here and yes okay here it is I already tore my notes up because I made this video already and the audio was really distorted. So I'm doing it over, but I already tore up my notes, so I'm having to piece them back together. 
All right, this example is the proportion 1 over y equals 1 over 6y minus 1. Uh, we recognize that it's a proportion because you have a single fraction on the left and a single fraction on the right. We're going to cross multiply. So the, I have a 1 on the left joined by the 6y minus 1, and I have a 1 on the right joined by the y. Now 1 times 6y minus 1 is of course 6y minus 1. 1y is the same as y. I am ready to move things across the equals. I'm going to make a 0 where the 6y is by subtracting. And I'm going to do the same thing to the right. And I get negative 1 equals 1y minus 6y is negative 5y. Now remember, you're solving for the variable, so it's the negative 5 that needs to be moved. Keep your goal in mind. Isolate the variable. Divide both sides by negative 5. You get positive 1 fifth equals y. And that's the solution to the original proportion written in blue. All right, before I leave you, I'm just going to give those of you who um, like this kind of thing a sort of an, uh, a formal definition of cross multiplication. Cross multiplication. Looks like this. If A over B equals C over D, notice we have one fraction equal to one fraction, then AD is equal to BC. What did they do? They put the B over there with the C and the D up there with the A. That's cross multiplication. All right, this has been a video on solving proportions. Thank you for watching.